Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You are watching South Asia Newsline and have the top stories we are tracking for you on. PM Modi meets President Biden in Washington to strengthen ties. Pakistan PM meets IMF chief hopes for release of stalled funds. And UN says Afghan women ban makes Taliban recognition near impossible. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday met President Joe Biden at the White House as part of his first official state visit to Washington. On Thursday, a trailblazing deal was also signed between General Electric and HAL to produce jet engines in India to power India's indigenous aircrafts after the Prime Minister met top industry leaders. U.S. memory chip firm Micron also confirmed up to $825 million investment in India. India and the U.S. were also expected to announce a series of agreements later in the day, including a procurement deal of 31 MQ-9B Predator drone and the signing of Artemis Accord between NASA and the ISRO. The U.S. is working to deepen ties with India and sees deeper military-to-military -military and technology ties as a key counterweight to China's dominance in the region. Meanwhile, the U.S.-based Fitch ratings on Thursday raised its growth forecast for the Indian economy to 6.3% for the current fiscal year from 6% earlier on the back of robust growth in the first quarter and strong near-term momentum. The Reserve Bank of India projects the economy will grow 6.5% in financial year 2024. Fitch said India will be affected to an extent by slowing global trade, while the full impact of the RBI's 250 basis points of monetary tightening is still to be felt. However, it said the government's push to increase capital expenditure, moderate commodity prices and robust credit growth are expected to support investment. India's retail inflation eased to 4.25% in May, firmly within the RBI's inflation band of 2 to 6% for the third straight month. Pakistan's junior foreign minister Hina Rabbani Khar has said choosing between China and the US will be a tight rope for Islamabad. In an interview with US-based newspaper Politico, Khar said Pakistan has enough problems of its own and does not want any added headache of a new Cold War between Beijing and Washington. In comments which were made before US President Joe Biden called his Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping a dictator, Khar said Islamabad has no appetite to pick a side. She said the instinct to preserve its partnership with the US would harm country's real strategic partnership with China. Pakistan, which is under tremendous financial debt, has swayed towards China in recent decades through giant infrastructure projects and investment, while Washington has turned its focus on Islamabad's Ash for India. With a little over a week before the IMF's extended fund facility expires, Pakistan's PM Shehbaz Sharif met IMF Managing Director Kristalina Georgieva on Thursday on the sidelines of the new Global Financing Summit in Paris. Sharif expressed hope that the IMF funding would be released as soon as possible. Pakistan has barely enough currency reserves to cover one month's imports. The global lender still has concerns over Pakistan's external financing gap, foreign exchange market operations and the budget presented earlier this month, which it said violated the program's objectives. Analysts say Pakistan could spiral into a dead default if the $1.1 million IMF loan does not come through. The UN envoy for Afghanistan, Rosa Ottenbeva, issued a warning to the Taliban on Wednesday, stating that obtaining international recognition as the legitimate government would remain nearly impossible unless they lift the severe restrictions imposed on women and girls regarding education and employment. She said the ban specifically targets the United Nations and the Taliban asks to be recognized by the world body, but at the same time acts against the key values expressed in the UN Charter. 
The Taliban initially promised a more moderate rule than during their first stint in power from 1996 to 2001, but started to enforce restrictions on women and girls soon after the 2021 takeover. After six months of inauguration, Nepal's Pokhara International Airport witnessed its first international landing after a chartered flight of Sichuan Airlines from China landed on Wednesday. However, the airport has got mired in a controversy after Chinese envoy to Nepal, Shen Song, reaffirmed that the airport was built under Beijing's ambitious Belt and Road Initiative. Nepal government, however, has been rejecting Chinese claims, a report by the Kathmandu Post suggested. With no development on air routes for entry-exit in India and airlines' reluctance to operate, experts are pessimistic about the airport's future. In an effort to upgrade cyclone forecast accuracy in next five years, India's weather office has been investing in a set of new supercomputers, high-resolution radar system and automated weather observatories. Take a look. India's weather office is investing in a set of new supercomputers, high-resolution radar system and automated weather observatories to upgrade its cyclone forecasting in the next five years the country's top weather official said. The most dramatic overall in nearly a quarter century comes after early warnings and timely evacuations this month helped the South Asian nation avert major casualties after the cyclone Bipajoy hit its west coast near neighboring Pakistan. Mrithunjay Mohopatra, Director General of State Run IMD said there was room for improvement, however. We have come off with a system where we can provide at least five days ahead the path, the intensity, time of landfall, the place of landfall, intensity at the time of landfall and also the associated adverse weather like heavy rainfall, winds, storm surge, coastal inundations. Mopatra said the weather service aims to deploy 62 radars up from 37 and triple the speed of its supercomputers to 30 petaflops from 10. New Delhi's last major overall of its cyclone forecasting apparatus was in 1999, after a tropical storm battered the east coast and killed 10,000 people. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.